I'm Stefan Lombard, executive editor of Haggerty Classic Cars, and today I'm at Motostalgia in Austin, Texas, with this 1979 Ford F100. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what you should look for if you wanna buy one. Ford debuted its popular F-Series trucks in 1948. And this 1979 model was the last of the sixth generation, which rode on the same platform that the fifth generation did and the fourth generation before that. So it's a time-tested, proven truck. And there's a lot to like about it. You could spec your F-Series with plenty of options. Four-wheel drive, air conditioning, a bed cover, sliding rear window, a CB radio, and in the case of this No Frills Custom, if you wanted to smoke in it, you could get yourself a $22 cigarette lighter. Now the F-Series was a durable truck, and there's not a lot that goes wrong with them, but they were prone to rust, particularly here at the base of the B-pillar, and that kind of rust killed a lot of these trucks. So if you're looking at one, make sure that that's a solid part. Another place to look is at the front of the bed. This truck sit on a little bit of a rake and water would just pool there and sit. Check your wheel wells. A lot of the times these trucks were driven off road, driven hard. All that crud that just sat in there could rot these wheel wells out. The front wheel wells were fitted with a no rust liner. The only problem was anything that got trapped above them could sit on the metal and eat it away. If you've got a Phillips head screwdriver, and if it's still there, unscrew a couple of the screws, reach up there with your hand, and check the condition of the metal. You'll also want to check for rust around the windshield, top, bottom, and sides. Water tended to get trapped in this seal, and any signs of bubbling indicate that there's rust you can't see. And if it's in the A-pillars, that's a truck you might want to walk away from. These trucks came with a versatile range of engines. Standard was a 300 cubic inch straight six, made about 114 horsepower, but 260 pound feet of torque. And that engine had been around since the 40s, so it was tested and durable. Optional engines included a 302, a 351, a 400, and even a 460. So let's pop the hood on this truck and see what we're dealing with. It's a pretty bomb proof engine. There's not a lot that goes wrong with these engines. It's fitted with a two barrel carb and it's tuned for low horsepower, lots of torque. And as long as it was treated to regular oil changes and fuel filter changes, you should be good to go. But as always, you want to check the condition of all the rubber in here, make sure that the fluids are all topped off, and that'll give you some indication that the previous owner took care of this truck. One mechanical gremlin to look for is the condition of the steering box. And you'll notice if there's a lot of play in the steering wheel, either the steering box needs adjustment or it needs to be replaced. And it's about 150 bucks on eBay. While you're in here, look at the frame rail here on the passenger side. The VIN is stamped in there. You want to compare that with the VIN tag that's on the driver's side door and make sure those numbers match. This particular truck has its original engine, but that's not always going to be the case. And unless originality matters to you, a truck that's been fitted with a different 302 or 351 or 400 or 460 isn't a big deal. And that speaks to the interchangeability of parts on these trucks. Just about every part you need is available online, in junkyards, and at swap meets. One of the hardest to find parts on these trucks is this aluminum grill shell. They took a beating and they've often been replaced. If originality is important to you, check this stamping right here. You should see the Firestone F plus a date code. Another thing to look out for is the alignment of the twin I-beam front end. And you could check that by looking at the condition of the front tires. Heavy wear indicates that you might be in for an alignment. Two great sources for information, part support, and any other questions you might have are the classic Ford Truck Club and FordTrucks.com. Chances are that any truck you're looking at from this era is gonna have suspect paint. Orange peel is pretty common from the factory, so don't be put off by that. This was also an era of bad paint in general, and it's not uncommon to find peeling clear coat and oxidation particularly on silver and maroon trucks. We always recommend a pre-purchase inspection. It costs you a few hundred dollars, and a specialist can get this on a lift, tell you exactly what you're looking at before you buy. It could save you a lot of money. And at the very least, get it on a lift yourself so you know what you're looking at. Trucks of this vintage didn't come with a rear bumper, but a lot of dealers in certain regions installed their own stamped with the dealership name. It's, if you can find a truck fitted with one or just find a bumper to put on yours, it's a neat touch and it'll make your truck stand out. Spray-in bed liners weren't really a thing in the 1970s, but if the truck you're looking at is fitted with one, it's a nice upgrade as it preserves the integrity of the bed. The interior of this F100 Custom is a simple, bare-bones layout. 
You got speedometer straight in front of you, alternator, temperature, not much more. This particular truck is a three on the tree. It was the standard transmission back in the day, but you don't see a lot of them anymore. This big windshield let in a lot of sunlight, so chances are the dash might be cracked. It's something to consider. Same with your vinyl seating. If it's ripped or torn, you might have to replace it. XLT models had cloth inserts, but that upholstery is widely available too. So the last thing to do is fire it up, see how it sounds, and take it for a drive. I like it. This truck didn't come with power steering, and it's really evident when you're navigating at slow speeds. Oh, it's a good upper body workout. Everybody needs that. Truck buyers tend to fall into three camps. Chevy guys, Dodge guys, and Ford guys. If you're a Ford guy, a vintage F-Series truck offers a lot to like. It's simple, bare bones, even the Rangers and XLTs and Lariats. Underneath, they're the same. If you've only ever driven cars, and an F-Series is your first truck, there is a learning curve. It's a big vehicle, and you need to respect its size, its dimensions, its road holding. So it's always good to take it out on a lonely road and just get a sense for what it does and what it doesn't do well. While you have it out there, let go of the steering wheel to see how it tracks. You going straight or are you veering off to one side? They're easy to keep on the road and you get a lot of great looks from people who appreciate seeing a classic vintage Ford on the road. And even if you're not a Ford guy and you just want an old truck, you should check out an F-Series.